be worth it. So, hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining us with week two of the Summer of Nose Challenges, the virtual day out, and it is the Hints edition. And we love yeah. Hints. Oh yes. So we're oh, going yes. to be giving you hints for both the beginners and the experience challenge. So let's dive straight in. For those of you who are haven't quite not sure, want to register, joined late, the link's at the top, come join us. If you've got any questions, uh, so during the live stream, pop them in the chat, we're keeping an eye out for that. If you're watching recording, please join us on the forum and we'll be able to answer your questions there. So that's community.nearforj.com. Right, let's get yep. cracking. Oh, get my mouse. So yes, this is edition, so we're going to get cracking and we're going to move straight into the beginner's challenge. So over to you, Alex. Cool. Thank you, Lou. All right. So um, this is um, this is it. So okay, Bloom um, is is what we said. So here again, uh, I quickly want to show you the uh, the medium post that Blue wrote, uh, which gives you all the information. And if you scroll down, you see what the, the this week's challenge will be like. And it's it's calling for Bloom. It's calling for using Sandbox. So that's why you need to go to neo4j.com/sandbox. Click on launch the free Sandbox and start your um, blank sandbox. I will be doing um, this on desktop today because I experienced some uh, network lag today between um, the browser and, uh, and Bloom and that, that made it a little bit laggy. So I'm I'm resolving back to um, to desktop, but I think this problem should be fixed uh, quickly and then you can, you, you can use it in, um, in sandbox as well. If you, if you, don't want to download stuff, then you can you can always use Sandbox, and Sandbox is a great tool. But I, I'll be using um, I'll be using desktop for this now. Basically, what you do here is um, you click uh, on new project, uh, give the project a name. So we call this Blooming Discovery, uh, and add a database, local one. Give it a password, uh, and then create that one, and it creates that one. So in on Sandbox, you basically go on um, on here, you launch your sandbox, click on um, launch your blank sandbox, which is void of any data. There are like 10 or 15 different options you have on the sandbox you, where you can already pre-populate your data. Uh, for this exercise here, we just need a blank version. So just use that one. And then you have in sandbox or in desktop both ways, um, you have the option to launch um, browser or to launch Bloom. And if you launch Bloom, don't forget to copy the login credentials. There will be a, a launch Bloom button and there will be a little key next to it. You need to click on that key and it gives you a username and a password, which will then be used for Bloom. I'll show you quickly as well. So although I'm not going to be using Bloom when we cover the experiencing, I'll quickly show you where you need to click and find the credentials. So don't panic, yeah. it's coming. You're still there, Alex. I'm still there. Yeah, I was. I was. Oh, you will show it later. Yes, Sorry, yes, I was. Yes, I was yes, 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 later, yeah. Later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Sorry. I'll tell about that. All right. Uh, right. Here we are in desktop. We click on open, open in browser. So here we go. Browser launches, um, and um, then you have um, your um, all the browser things, and then you have here your your input bar uh, where you can type in your queries. Lou has provided a, a couple of, uh, of queries already. So um, these are the ones we need to load the data for the, for the challenge. And I will do this step by step, but you can load this all at once. Just make sure on desktop in, in Sandbox, I think you don't have to worry about this. You just can copy and paste it over. In desktop, you will need to click this cog here on the, on the left-hand side, which says settings, and make sure to ha you have checked the enable multi-statement query editor. That needs to be checked. If that is, you just basically can go ahead, go to what Lou provided, select everything, copy it, and paste it in here. But for the sake of you learning something, let's go a little bit uh, step by step. So that's why I'm separating this up. Um, but this is doesn't, doesn't need too much explanation. So the first one is just creating a couple of indexes on our various nodes we will be creating. So the paintings, the artists, the classification, and the department. And this makes finding uh, 
and navigating through the graph uh, that much easier and that much quicker in the end. So that's why we created yeah, that. Pretty index. a quick quick reason why we create indexes. So it's it's to speed things up. So um, if you think about it, so absolutely when you do queries in near 4 j in a graph database, it's all about this index free um, traversal. So the idea is when you're going between two different nodes. So let's say we're going from painting to artist. Uh, once you've found your painting node and you want to find out the artist associated with that, you don't have to do a lookup for artist. You just find what relationship, outbound relationships you've got coming from painting that point to a node of uh, label artist and there you go that's it so that's really really fast and this is why it's really great to be able to do these long traversals but what we do with an index is we still have to find our starting point so for example with painting if we're specifying a specific title or uh, a specific id that we're looking at we still have to find that starting point and what an index allows us to do is we can build an index on a property that we want to search on or it's a unique property or something like that and we can then build an index on that and what that means is that when you're trying to then do a lookup you're like you're finding your initial node before you traverse the relationships that's going to be really fast because rather than the database having to scan like everything you know all the content so the engine having to scan everything and they're all the different nodes or all the nodes with the with a label of painting against an ID, it just goes up, oh, you've got an index, I, I'm going to go and look you up an index. And that means it's really, really fast to get into that start point. And then we do the traversals. Another reason as well, yep. why we're using indexes and, and why we're doing them here is if we're doing anything around merging, and you're going to see some merges later, what we want to do. So merge basically goes away and says, do you already exist? If you don't already exist, I'm going to create a new one. If you do already exist, I'm going to behave like a match. So I'm going to find you. So a bit like an upset in SQL world. And uh, with the merge, again, it's going to do that same thing. If we don't put an index in, it's going to go away and search everything in the database to see if that already exists. And if you're loading a, a large amount of data, what you'll see is that the load will get slower and slower and slower. But if you put an index in there, because it's super, super fast, uh, it literally, what would potentially take minutes, if not hours, because it's having to search through hundreds of thousands of nodes, it will it will do in millisecond seconds. So those are the two reasons why we've got indexes there. So it will make more sense as we go through. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, next, next up, or basically first up <clears throat> after creating the indexes, are uh, now we are creating our paintings and classifications um, nodes. So here we go with a load CSV um, statement at first. So that means the uh, Neo4j will look at this URL specific file where Lou has provided the, uh, the CSV file from the uh, Metropolitan Museum with all the information and look into that CSV file. And you can yourself look into the file, download it and look it up in, in Google Sheets or Excel or whatever. And you will see a huge file with lots of rows and columns. Uh, and what it does here, it, it opens that file and then uh, starts to um, create new nodes from it. Um, and it starts with paintings. So here you go. This, this is the first one we create. So here is um, the first set. So it does create here the painting from here to here. And in between all in this, in this bracket um, area is um, the properties of that painting. So it says here, object ID where it takes the ID name row. The title name, named row will also give the title, the, the name of the title for the painting, um, a begin date. So when was this drawn uh, or created? If it's a if it's a, a statue or something, um, then a URL. So that means there is a, a link to that painting on the, at the Metropolitan Museum website where you can actually find more details. Uh, we'll show you that later. And then there is also the the, um, the culture tag. And then we have the classification. So classifications are in one row, but they are collected together in this one row, but only divided or separated by each other with this long line. But we want every classification be, to be its own node because otherwise it would mesh, mesh them all together. Um, and um, we will split them up. So that's why we use the split statement here uh, and create a classification as its own from, from, these, all, from these values here and then create the uh, classification nodes. And then we have these two values here and we have 
our first graph going from O, which was the painting, with a relationship has classification to see which actually is the classification. And then we execute. And so this runs a little bit. And then now we have created 4,138 nodes with 24,000 properties and 4,221 relationships uh, between each other. So that's good. Next up, we load the artist. So back again here to the file. Um, going in here, again, we go to the CSV file we have provided. Um, we look for the, the paintings already in the database. And now we go for the artists um, and we, we create them again. So maybe Lou, do you want to quickly talk about Coalesce and what it does here in, the, in this specific case? Indeed. So what some of you may have discovered, for those of you who are really keen and have jumped ahead and thought, let's have a look at this file that they're telling me to go off and load. You, you may spot that some of the attributes have blanks in there. So, uh, for example, uh, some of the artists uh, display name, you know, some of them might have something blank. So there's no artist name for a piece. That makes sense. There are some paintings from you know, thousands of years ago there and you're not necessarily going to know who painted it. Uh, you may have a situation as well with artists where the artist may not have a, a year because they're an unknown artist. You know, there's, there's sorts of things going on like that. So uh, what, what we can do is we can try and set some kind of a default value and we can go, well, you know what, I want to set it to this particular uh, string if this value is null. So what Coalesce does, it'll go through, you provide it a, a list of um, things and what it'll do is the first one that's not a null, it will set it to that value. So that's effectively what Coalesce is doing. It's helping us deal with null values for properties. Exactly. And and here, um, after we've done this, we create the, the or merge the artist node here again. Again, same as before, we have a little less properties for this one. We have the artist's name and we have the end year. So again, um, when the artist died and we create a relationship. So O, again, remember O was the painting here on top. Give it a relationship has artist to this other node, A artist, which is the artist. So, and then um, here in this last step, we take the artist and um, transform the end year uh, into an integer um, value. So that means um, there's not a string, which by default is, is, is treated as a string, but actually is a number. So like 1425 or something, um, 1425 actually is a, um, a string integer, uh, sorry, is an integer <clears throat> and not a string. Yeah. And something that's probably worth mentioning as well, we've got a for each in there. And the reason we have that is because some of the paintings have more than one artist and we've done the split. So now we've got an array of artists. And what we're trying to say is, we want to treat each artist as a separate entity. So that's why we're doing that for each. So a painting may have more than one artist. So we do that. So that's just what's going on there. If you were going, oh, what's this? Yeah, exactly. So we execute this as well. Um, it did it here. You see the two check marks, um, all is well. And then we go here. Next step is remove, <clears throat> excuse me, remove unknown artists. So again, we take um, our artist nodes, we we take we, we match them. So that means like find them or pick them in, in the data set. Uh, and then we look for specific ones where where the name of that artist contains an unknown uh, value or an unidentif uh, or unidentified. So that means either it is so old that we don't really know who did that uh, piece of art in the first place or because for some other reason, we, we cannot say or that was a data error or something. Uh, and we detach, delete these artists. So detach, delete means we delete the node artist, but also all relationships going out from that particular artist that um, is unknown. And we execute that. And then with four nodes uh, have been deleted by, by that process. Uh, and then final step is uh, again, we go into the CSV file, and this time we go and create departments. So here we take the we create the D, D department nodes, give them a name as a property, and then um, match this again with the paintings and create a new relationship between the paintings we already had. Give them the in department relationship to D, which was the department we created up here, and we execute. <clears throat> and this already added 15 labels, 15 nodes, and so forth. So 
we we can close browser now but quickly i want to want to show you if you click on the on this database icon on top, you see what actually happens in the database. So you have artists, classification department, and painting node labels. And we have has artist, has classification, and has in department relationship. And we could even um, we could even call um, oops oops. How, how do I, did I write this wrong? Yeah. So you know you're, you're so probably for those of you who are looking at the schema, something to bear in mind is that this the, how you call the database schema has changed slightly between version three point five x and version four point zero ah. onwards of Near for J. So if you're using version three point five x, so I'll show you that on the sandbox, you would use yep. call db dot schema. If you're on four point zero, it's going to be call db dot visualization dot schema i believe yeah oh, schema visualization schema. that's the one so schema dot visualization yeah. and that's going to show okay. there we go yeah all right and then you can see how this looks like as a <clears throat> as a basic yeah um set of rules so we have the paintings here and we have classification department and artist but for this exercise we don't need to do this in the in, in browser we're going to do this in bloom so that's why we click on here and click on neo4j Bloom and we launch Bloom. In Sandbox, there's a button that says launch in Bloom. <clears throat> so that's that's easy. <clears throat> All right. So then here we have our, um, our Bloom launched, and this is what it what it gives you at the beginning. Once you launch Bloom for the first time, <clears throat> for your specific database, you um, need to create a data a perspective. So we click on the create perspective button, and then we generate perspective. So what Bloom is doing now is looking into the, data, the database and say, okay, what, what have we here? And then it gives you a suggestion or they say, okay, we have painting, we have an artist, we have classification and department as labels or nodes. Um, these make sense. Uh, if they make sense for you, which can use perspective, you can always create your own style, but these do make sense. So we use that. And then Bloom is ready for you to explore the data. And um, what it gives you here is uh, on top, you have a search bar where you can uh, type anything real, real, real word. It already gives you a suggestion here. And on the right hand side, it gives you um, a couple of styling options for your nodes and relationships. So you see what was what's in there. So like we seen before, the artist, the classification, the department, and the paintings and our relationships that we have created. So let's fill the scene with some information so we I, I start typing even i didn't have to complete the whole word already it gives me a suggestion so i probably mean the department node so yes i do mean that and i click on that and it loads up uh, the department nodes so i see it 15 nodes found it gives me back it tells me and i see them all here and i can zoom out a little bit so you see them all or i see when some more if i want um, a close-up look and now i can I can stylize those. I can give them some some individual styling depending on what I want to see with the with the bloom visualization. So for that, I need to click on that um, blue icon or blue blue box here, basically, and and I, I it gives me an option of various things I can do with the um, with these nodes. I can change the color, um, maybe give it a green color. Um, I can change the size, I can make him bigger or make him smaller. Let's let's keep it in the in the one time size, and then I can give it an icon. Um, and there are lots and lots of icons, and you have a, a couple of suggestions here. But you can also use the search bar here and search for an icon, and you can type in anything. But because we are in a um, in a art kind of database, or we have we, we treat art here, so let's let's type in art, and you get all the things with art. That, uh, that the icon library has. And I think this one is a good pick for a uh, department. It looks a little bit departmenty, at least in my mind. So that's why I'm picking it. So, okay, you see here, you know, it has this icon here on top of the name of the, um, the node. And then uh, interesting point here is the rule-based styling. So I click on rule-based styling and add a rule-based styling here. And I can select a property key. So department only has one and that's the name of it. And then I can uh, define if I want to stylize it in a, in a specific way. So let's say um, the the rule should be that it should contain the word art in it. And if it does contain the word art in it, it should become a red node. And you can already see that. And I close that styling window here and I zoom out a little bit. And now you see 
all the departments that are in the art space i mean all of them are sort of in the art space but all the all the the ones that really have art in their names are now um, red um, colored and if i zoom in some more i can see some some more details obviously i see here medieval art greek and roman art probably ancient whatever so let's click on here double click and uh, by double clicking i get some more information about the node i see here it's called ancient near eastern art is um the name of the the node here i see the relationships so i see here this one has in department relationships with two other um with two other um, nodes in this case with two other paintings and i see the neighbors which are said uh, two paintings um and i can and i can click on them i can uh, explore some more um i can click on reveal here for example and then i see the direct connection here between this department node and this painting or um i can do a different kind of exploration so i let me let me zoom out a little bit more again and say okay i pick uh, let's maybe pick this one here modern and contemporary art um, and i want to explore this further and the, all the rest of the nodes i don't really care about so that's why i do i can do a right click on on the on the node and i get some options here and i can click on dismiss other nodes and if i click here everything else is gone so i zoom out some more you see everything else is gone it's just this one here the modern and contemporary art node is here and if I say, okay, now I want to see what's what's what actually is connected here, I can uh, do a right click again and see this expand um, option here. And then here it gives me some some possibilities how I can expand my my one node. I can basically expand everything that is connected to that node, and I see how mu how much that is. So sometimes I will be I will be finding a node that has thousands of nodes connected to it, and then if I click. Uh, uh, expand all then i have a huge uh, um, a huge graph in my in my face basically and i, I maybe may too much but here in this case i see okay 10 nodes i can handle those there is an advanced expansion option here which for this data set doesn't make too much sen sense i think but you can play around with it and it gives you some options so for example i went only um i, I will can limit it to a certain amount of, of nodes so if it really is thousands of nodes so i can say okay i only want to see it from 25 or whatever number here or if one node has various relationships with other nodes, I can say, okay, I only want to get the nodes that are connected in this with this relationship to another node. In this case, there is only one, so it doesn't make make much sense. But look, okay, let's see, let's expand all of them. Scroll out a little bit, and then we see, okay, we have here um, the modern um, and contemporary art, and these are all the paintings that are. Um, sitting with that uh, particular. Um, department and then if i click on one painting i um i get some more information as well so here i see again the properties and this is the one we loaded just before so we see okay culture in this case unavailable a date date from day two so this is when the um i, I guess the author i think was probably the, the how do you say the it's, author the, the artist yeah so yeah. that's <laughs> what they tend to do with the yeah. um from and to date uh, some of the paintings, they know exactly when they were painted. So a lot of the time, those two years will be the same. Sometimes a piece of work just took longer and they've got information about that. But for some of them, you'll see like a big range. And that big range is going to be, well, we think roughly this period of time is when this painting may have been done. And that's, you know, when they're not too sure. And you can see some of these gaps like 50 this years or something. Lot, so, yeah. 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 And then here's the name. So this is what the artist called this this this, uh, this drawing is called horse and buggy. And if you click here on this on this link, and I can do that now, it opens a web page directly to the Met Museum, and it gives you some more information about here again horse and buggy is the name. Here you can see the picture, and then you can see some more information down here if you scroll down further. Um, okay, let's go back to Bloom. So once you you did a little exploration, you did some some styling here and there, and then you have some some graphs on your scene. But now you want to do something else. Maybe you can do a right click, um, and you can click on Clear Scene here. And if you click there, everything is gone, uh, and you can start anew and, uh, with something else. So again, maybe we want to find a particular painting, for example. So um, we can do painting. And if I start typing, you see you already find, gives me some some classification and some um, category information first. So, but I don't want to uh, I want to explore all the paintings because uh, they they will be lots and 
well, I, I maybe I can I can show you what happens. Uh, it, it loads them all up, and uh, it, it it did find more than four thousand nodes, and this is exceeding the query limit. So now you see a huge blob of of yellow. It's probably a little bit too much now to explore anything in uh, that makes sense. So. Mm. Um, if you did this by accident, you can always click uh, right click and do undo, and then it um, gets gives you one step back. Or in this case, we can also clear scene, but let's undo and then it's back to normal. Um, we we want to uh, find a painting with a, with, a, with a specific title, for example, and say, okay, uh, queen should be in the, the title. And then, okay, uh, we have whoopsie, three nodes gives me here and it shows you these three nodes and these are the three paintings um, that have queen or start with queen in the name and here let's say queen charlotte is the one we're interested in uh, let's say we want to expand this and then maybe here the advanced expansion makes more sense we say okay here we see it has different kinds of relationship it has an artist has classification and is in department because these three are all only one node we can just click them all and click on expand but it could be that one has like thousands underneath it. And then you say, okay, yeah, maybe not. Maybe let's just show the other ones. It makes more sense. But in this case, let's show everything. And then we see here um, our little graph. And this is the building, uh, the building I'm saying, this is the painting uh, named Queen Charlotte. It is a painting, so it's classified as painting. It is a European painting. And the artist is Thomas Gans Gansbourg. And if you double click on that, again, we see the information 1747 to 1788. So again, this is either took very long or is this the potential time when this was, was drawn? Um, uh, we don't quite know. But uh, again, we click on that URL and it opens up a, a Met Museum page. We see the painting. So this is Queen Gansbourg here. No, it's Queen Charlotte by Thomas Gansbourg, sorry. Um, and uh, we know some more information. And if you scroll down, interesting enough, I think, um, we have an audio section here, and this, this shows uh, the audio guide. So even here, you can uh, explore your data and can listen to uh, information about the painting, why it was was painted, who did it, and, and what uh, the reason was behind it, and some more information, background information. So like we said in, 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 the, in, the, in our stream on Monday, you can explore the museums really from, from your... Um, from your sofa and uh, you even get an audio tour. So that's, uh, I think that's great. Um, yeah. All right, so this is, uh, this is Bloom. Um, one more thing I, I think I want to show you just for the, for the extra credit section is if you click on the top left here, um, you get um, these um, options here in the search option is the one which you need for uh, an additional search query or search phrase. You need to add search phrase here and it gives you uh, some options and um, you can call your search phrase here and you, you start typing so let's say the question was painting with, with something title so um, we give that a, um, a specific um, you know parameter or a token here and it's dollar sign and then the name of your uh, of your token basically we can give it a, a description so name of painting with <clears throat> in, the, in our in our in our section it was harbor but you know something else in name um, and then here down here you can um, select what kind of parameter this should look for so let's say uh, it should be a string yes it should be a label yes but for a painting and the name should be title and then here you need to type in your, your cipher query. This is a good start here that suggests you something. It is not complete. So you have to look a little bit further what you want to put there. This does not work yet. At least, I mean, it does work, but it doesn't give you what you want. Um, but I don't want to spoil everything for you and write it out. So or spell it out. So you will have to find out a little bit more yourself, but this is how it's done. Have a go. Have a go, exactly. And I think with that, um, if you don't have any questions on Bloom, if there's anything else, uh, I think that's that's my little tour. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, again, if you've got questions and, and you're just thinking about them, by all means, just ask them because we're going to have the experience. So if you've got beginner's questions, put them in. That's fine. We'll handle them as we go through. So 
And as a quick reminder as well, uh, you do have this available in the blog post. So you have the the data model if that's going to help you explore, or you need to remember what the name of the the uh, properties were. You've got all that information there for you. Okay, let's move on to the experience challenge. So yeah, what we would do, oh yes, it's fun. Uh, if, if, if the <laughs> beginners, if, if you if you finish it, oh I'm hungry for more. Do have yeah. a go. Do have a go. And when you get the data in, you know, and you added some extra data, you could have a go at exploring it in Bloom as well if you're enjoying that experience. So what we have, so a quick reminder of what this challenge was. We wanted you to do some more data processing on import. And then we had some fussy, fussy friends who we were going to do a virtual museum viewing with and they had a number of specifications so one friend wants to see pictures with birds in them another friend wants to see the medium gold used another friend likes those really big paintings the extra large paintings and we had a fourth friend who really likes artists from the uh, romantic period so we had these specifications so we had to do some work with the data before we can go away and find these paintings where at least three out of four of those requirements are met. So we're trying to get as many friends happy as possible. So what we're going to do in this hint section, and again, if there's something that's, that, you, that you're um, thinking about that hasn't come up, drop a question in the chat. If you are watching this on the catch up, then drop a message in the community forum and we'll help there with those as well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a quick look at the data and that's gonna give us a bit of a, you know, some thinking around how we might want to tackle some of the things. Also, what are we tokenizing and how? And dealing with those size dimensions. So what I've done here, now this is not a complete model, but this is just to give you an idea of how I have, based on the questions that were set, how I'm thinking about processing the data. So as you see from before, we've, got, we've still got our artist. So I've left it and I've, I've not done anything to change artist. We've still got painting, but what I've done is I've added an, oops, Google's not being helpful here, but I've added a, 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 <laughs> an extra property on there, which is dimension. I'll show you what I've done with that. And you see, we've got some extra nodes in here, which you can choose or choose not to. So I've got a uh, medium that I've added. So medium is a thing that's like, you know, painted with oil on canvas or used charcoal or I'm, the, the various various you can tell I'm not an art person here uh, you know but the various <laughs> mediums that have been used uh, for that painting and then I've got this concept of medium word so what I'm doing here in my approach is that I tokenize those uh, medium sentences that we have so sometimes it's just oil on canvas sometimes it's a long list like they've been using gold ah oh, that magic keyword of gold <laughs> so um, so what I do is I tokenize those uh, words and I create this new node label called medium word and i put a relationship with that to painting i also have a tag label node so this is going to be all the tags that we have and this is like for example are there birds that was another requirement wasn't there so uh, the tags about paintings of uh, sort of birds queen was one or woman or maybe dogs that kind of thing river waterfall you know the various tags that have been assigned to that painting and again, those will be split. So we'll have a look at that in a second. And also size. So one of the things we also asked you to do was to put paintings into size categories. So we've got five size categories. So extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. So that's another thing as well. So this is not the full data model, but I'm just giving you an outline of, you know, what I'm using to answer the question. So let's a quick look at the data. So. I'm not going to go through this because it's a little bit unwieldy and as Alex suggested, you might want to look at it in Excel because uh, that's split it nicely into columns. I'm going to look at it in uh, Neo4j. So I've got Sandbox here. So very quickly, let's talk about uh, launching Bloom from Neo4j. So what you can do here is if you click on Bloom, so you notice we've now got uh, um, Bloom on blank Sandbox. So you have this little picture of a key, so it just means we need to provide a password. So if you click on the little down arrow here, you'll see we've got a tab here called connection details. So if you click on connection details, you will see here you've got the password. So all of the usernames are near for j on Sandbox. So you don't have to try and memorize that. It's always near for j And for the password, you see it here. 
and you just press the copy button and that will copy the password into your clipboard and then when you click Bloom it's going to go away, it's going to launch Bloom hmm. and just it's give it a moment. Oh, whilst that's going, I'm going to launch browser as well. And I multitask. Right, so there you go. So you've got Bloom up, <laughs> then all you need to do is put in the username, put in the password, press connect, and you are good to go. And then you've got Bloom up and running there on Sandbox. So that's what you're going to do with regards to instructions if you are using Sandbox. And Sandbox is great yeah. because you don't need to download it. It's super easy. Anything. Absolutely, Excellent. yeah. It's really easy, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Right, so we're in the sandbox. So I've already preloaded some data, but what I'm going to do is let's just look through our um, look through our data. So I'm going to do so if I do uh, with row, actually just return straight away. So we can do this, and then straight away we can have a look at we're going to have a look at uh, whoopsie daisy uh, at the row so you can see here we've got all of the row headers so all of these names here locale object begin date object name etc 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 so here th these are all of the headers that we have in the csv and the ones that we're really interested in for the purpose of this challenge and again please do go away and if you say well actually I, I do want to get the artist's wikidata url because i want to go off and have a look on wikidata about that artist or no i really do want to add uh, you know the artist's year of birth or any other bits and pieces do go and have a go have a play and load it in but i'm keeping it slim for now but you can see the things that we're interested in here so for example we're interested in tags and there we go, we can see those bars. So we can see that there are three tags associated with this painting. And the approach that the Met Museum have used for their um, catalogue data in their CSV is they use the bars to separate things. And you'll see the bars in tags. You saw the bars in artists. So remember we had uh, some paintings that, or painting objects that had more than one artist. So they would have been separated with a bar. And if there was more than one artist with an artist name, then there was more than one artist begin date, more than one artist end date, and so forth. And all of those are split by the bar. So immediately we know that's the splitter that's being used. So you'll see some of those examples being used. So we're going to do some splitting by bar. And we keep looking through what we've got. The other thing that we're interested in was the object dimensions. So let's see that. So here we go, we've got the object dimensions. So this one's a relatively simple one. And the regex that you've been provided with, the regular expression, what that will do is it goes off and just looks for these. So I'm going to hold off on dimensions for a moment because there's a little bit more involved than that. Uh, the other thing as well we're interested in was medium. So I think we were here somewhere. There you go, medium ivory. So that's easy, that's just like one word. But let's have a look at another example where we've got lots of tags lots of uh, medium, lots of lots of everything. So let's just quickly update this query. And I want row dot. Oh, I want to do length on this. So this is how I'm doing it. I want long words. It is greater than say 40 and length of the tag is greater than say oh let's live love dangerous so i'm sure there's something existing and what was the last one that we're interested in so oh, oh medium medium yes it's greater than 20. let's go for those essays so let's this should hopefully bring us there we go lovely so we've got an example here let's have a look so we've got tags, so we've still got three tags, but that's fine. So we know we've got separator. And the reason why we're tokenizing these things is this is a really great way, well, the beginnings of a recommendation engine, if you want to go, well, actually, I really like paintings that have got 
um, mountains and waterfalls and lakes and I don't mind birds but it has to have these things then you can because we've split this out it becomes really really easy to find all of these paintings that fit that category and you can keep adding those filters like well actually I love these paintings but I like to have like the really tiny ones because those are fun I want to see all of the uh, lots of pillar boxes and things so you add that criterion and so forth and it's a really great way we can start to put all of these constraints and find stuff and you know th th this is like the beginnings of a recommendation engine that we're doing here and mm. much like the challenge that we've set it's a recommendation <laughs> engine we are recommending what paintings should we put in our private um, virtual viewing based on the user preferences so th th these are all these techniques that we're using so we've got the main what got paintings the should we hang in the bathroom exactly <laughs> The one that we don't like so much versus the paintings <laughs> in the living room that we like a little bit more. <laughs> so, for example, here, so medium, I'm going to have another go. I'm going to make something a bit bigger. So we'll do that in a second. But here, for example, maybe you're interested in oil paintings and you don't mind if that's oil on paper, oil on canvas, oil on a bit of metal. You know, the thing is, you like oil. And then, you know, maybe you like to see painting, you know, you want to see paper things. So you get the idea. And what we're going to do here, or what I did, and I suggest you all do, because it's part of the challenge and it'll make it easier, is I tokenized the words, but here I did it on the spaces. So I'm splitting the word by spaces. And so that's that's the medium we've got in there. And what else have we got? So that, that, what was the other thing that we were interested in? I think it was medium, oh, dimensions, dimensions, right. So we sometimes see, in fact, quite a few of these paintings, you'll get a situation where you have more than one set of dimensions or you get something like this. So what we are asking you to do, so you'll do that regex and you'll probably probably be using regex groups in the APOC text helper functions, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> you, will, uh, you, will, you will see that you end up with a number of dimensions that come back when you run the, the regular expression. So what we're saying is, just get the first one. If you get more than one set of dimensions, just use the first one. Assume the first one. Assume height and uh, width and height. Doesn't matter, you multiply one against the other. And if it happens that the first set you get is this like three dimensions, just use the first two dimensions. Ignore the third dimension. So just use the first two. So if you've got more than one set, use the first one. If you've got a set, your first set or the only set has three dimensions, just use the first two dimensions. Hopefully that makes sense. And what I did was I first, you saw I had that dimensions um, attribute that I added to the painting. So in there I put in the, you know, the attribute. So I, I took this and I converted it into area in square centimeters. So that's going to be this value times by this value. And then I did the categorization afterwards into the size bucket. So that's probably the easiest way of doing that. Another comment on dimensions, as we are here now, you will notice that we don't get the dimensions from a lot of paintings that have CM. The reason we don't is there's a bit of a data quality issue with the dimensions. And when I was putting together this regex, I kind of thought I'm going to draw the line because this pulls in a large number of the paintings and that's good enough for this problem. But if you want to, there's issues around spacing. Sometimes they put dots after things. So it's a bit of fun. And again, I completely appreciate that some of this processing you'd probably do before you imported the data. That's totally fine. But please stick to the regex and posting the data within the F4J just to make sure that we're standardizing the answers. Um, so that's a little bit about processing those. So you will want to do a split on those and you you so you've got the regex for the uh, dimensions you uh, are strongly recommended to think about splitting the mediums based on spaces commas and any other obvious things you will want to standardize how your medium words come in so either pick uh, for example lowercase for everything and then just remember to search in lowercase just because if you think about the medium here we have a sentence and obviously if we're searching for oil we don't know whether oil is the first word it's been capitalized or, or later on so again just sensible choices on the text so what i can do i can do call db.schema this is a 3.5.x database which is why it's uh, db.schema not db schema visualization and you can just see for example what i've done here 
and what I would recommend is do have a look and even reuse in fact I, I strongly suggest that you reuse the uh, load script that you got for the beginners challenge because you'll see some tricks about how do you handle the uh, multiple tags so like you had the for each trick for example you've got the trick about dealing with uh, nulls if it's applicable uh, so that would be useful to go away and see if that is useful for you thing and don't forget to you may need to set some indexes so, or constraints so do have a think about that as well but here you go we've got something like this so there you go i've got my painting you can see i've got my medium what let me scroll this bit you can see i've got my medium word here you can see i've uh, you know what else have added medium so i only did that as a first pass because i thought it'd be quicker to first connect to medium to painting and then do the post-processing of medium to painting because bearing in mind we need to rehook the, all of the words that appeared in medium back to painting so i've done it like that and i've got tag as well so you've got the idea of what's going on and i've got my painting size so you don't have to call it painting size i called it painting size it doesn't matter as long as we've got those five buckets with the sizes as provided in the blog post so hopefully that makes sense so the next part which may tickle you slightly is so how exactly do i retrieve these paintings where they meet three out of four conditions all I'm going to say is think about paths and size might be a useful cipher function to think about. And I'm leaving it there. If you get really, really stuck and you go around houses, drop a message on the forum. But I'm going to leave it there and hopefully that should be enough to get you comfortably on your way. And again, if you've got any questions on this uh, and you're catching up the live stream, drop, forum drop is your the forum. The forum is your friend. I like that. For a <laughs> friend. But yeah, so I shall leave it there for the experienced. And we don't have any questions that come in, so. I don't see any, no. No. So in that case, good luck. Exactly. Good luck, everybody. Looking yes. forward to your submissions. We, are re we have already submission. So we have already received a few. So um, if you haven't done uh, your submission yet, uh, still time until Sunday. We look forward to uh, receiving yours. Yes. Um, yeah, until then, good luck. See you later. See you Monday. See you later. Bye. Bye.